If you want to create anything like smoke or fire or dust or any kind of emission that might be a particle, you'd use a particle system in Unity. A particle system can be accessed from the game object menu and is made up of several different components. So if you go to game object, create other particle system, you'll see if you make your particle system somewhere where you can actually see in the scene view or zoom in on it or select it in the hierarchy and press F with your mouse over scene view, you'll be able to see that it looks something like that by default. It's made up of an ellipsoid particle emitter component, a particle animator component and a particle renderer. We're just going to make something basic in order to show off what you could do to make a very simple explosion. In this example, I have a box with a rigid body on and when it detects any collision with another object, it gets destroyed. So this script, box destroy, is on my weight component. And when I press play, as soon as the box hits the floor, it gets destroyed. Now we're going to make this a bit more interesting by adding a particle system into the mix. Um, the only other thing I've prepared for this is a material, so a texture. Um, when I double click on that, you can see that it's in Photoshop. I've done a 64 square canvas. And with that, I've drawn on a simple star shape and saved it into my assets folder. I haven't made the material for it yet. Uh, we'll look at making that in a minute. So with this ellipsoid particle emitter, particles are getting generated around its transform. Okay, So you can set size, energy, which is the amount of time spent in the world, um, and amount of emissions at any given time, um, uh, world velocity, local velocity, uh, randomized, tangent, and tangent's the one we're going to look at now. So the first thing I'm going to go in and do is to set the size. So I might want it to be between 1 and 3. Then energy-wise, I want them to exist between 1 and 2 seconds. And I don't want there to be quite so many of them. So I'm going to take that from between anywhere between 20 and 30. Now they're all billowing around because they're being uh, created at roughly at the same point within some reason. We want to actually add a velocity to them when they get created. You can do that with tangent velocity. And what we're going to do is just tell it to fire them out in all axes at a value of 4. And you can see now that they're all flying out at that value in various different um, sizes and all lasting for the different times that I've given them. Then what I might want to do is say one shot. So if you're going to create something like an explosion or some kind of burst of particles that's going to happen just once, so if it was a, a muzzle flare of a gun that fires just once, you'd use one shot. So that fires them out at that particular speed that you've specified and does it once. Now it's not going to destroy the object because obviously we need to design it. So if you want that to happen when the actual game is played, you also need to tick auto destruct. We're not going to see that previewed now because we can't delete the actual object but you'll see that um, later on uh, when we create it or instantiate it from a script. So I've made it fire those out at a particular speed. Um, the other thing you could do is to animate color but instead we're going to put on um, just a normal texture that star I showed you earlier uh, and we're going to let the opacity of them uh, be handled by that color animator. So you can see when I click on each of these the alpha value is how visible that particle is. So you can see it starts off um, very faded out. It comes up to full value. That's the line underneath each of these white colors, by the way. So at number two, it's fully visible. And then the last two, it fades out again. You can see the last one is nearly invisible. Okay, so it's animating through those colors. So we leave that on to get the alpha values fading in and out. But we are going to apply a material to the renderer. So I'm going to go to create and say material. I'm going to call this star particle. Notice that when I've not got the particle system selected, it doesn't preview in order to uh, save CPU cycles on um, what the engine is actually doing. And the type I need for that is a particle shader. And I'll go with alpha blended. Then all I need to do is to drag my texture and drop it onto the texture slot. And you can see the transparency in the background, uh, which is what I had in my Photoshop document originally. Then what I'll do is reselect my particle system, 
go to the renderer component and replace that default particle look by dragging and dropping my star particle. And you can see now if you look at the game view and the scene view, if I pull out a little bit, that they're getting created and sort of bursting over time. So all I need to do now is to save that as a prefab and call it in whenever I want. So what I'm going to do is go to create and prefab. I'm going to call this, um, I'll call this starburst. And then I'll just grab my particle system and drop it onto that as a prefab. So that prefab, as with any other prefab, has all the same settings of my item. So I don't need that in the game when I start. So command backspace or delete if you're on a PC. Um, and then I just need to call that in. So when my weight lands on the floor, I have a script called box destroy. I'll open that up. And all I'm going to do then is just to put in a simple instantiate command. So if you don't remember how to do that, then you can either follow me now or go back to the particular um, tutorial on that. I'm going to create them at the same transform position and transform rotation as the box when the collision occurred. Okay, so that's crucial. So when this box lands on the floor, I want it to be literally replaced by the particle system. So it's still going to get destroyed because we need the box to be destroyed afterwards so we can see that it's actually hit the floor and the particles have kind of seem like they've burst out of it, so to speak. So with that stars variable there, I need to create that at the top so that I can assign my starburst prefab to it. So I'm going to say stars and I'm going to data type that to particle emitter, capital P, capital E. So I could simply have said game object there, but instead I'll be very specific about the kind of object I'm going to be applying to it. So if I save that script and switch back and look at my weight in the scene, you can see there that stars is waiting for a particle emitter uh, prefab to be assigned. So I'll drag that and drop it on. Then when I press play, the box falls to the floor and the box and the uh, particles are emitted in place of it, which is exactly what we wanted. Now the auto destruct thing, just to make you aware, if we go back to the, that and um, untick auto destruct and press play again, then the particle system will be created but it's going to loop, okay? So it's going to keep going. So if you were making a particle system that constantly emitted, you wouldn't be ticking auto destruct. You'd just be applying a velocity and that object would exist. We're ticking auto destruct because we want that object to remove itself after it's cycled through the animation once. So that's the basics of using a particle system in Unity.